We're in the new era in the United States of America. We have a new president, and we want to thank God for it. Okay? We want to thank God for it. We have a new president. I want to say thank God for um, um, our, our American way of uh, passing the baton from one president to another president rather seamlessly. Uh, that's what happens in a democracy that, that, um, that, that is God-fearing. I'm, I'm still going to say we're a God-fearing country because there's a whole lot of us, in the millions and millions and millions of us in the United States of America that we still believe in God. We're a God-fearing country. I don't care what other naysayers, mockers, cynics, say about who we are as a people. We are the most God-fearing, loving, generous people on the face of the earth. Country after country. Country after country. Disaster after disaster. Catastrophe after catastrophe. Let me tell you who's there first. We are. We're there with container ships. We're there where we're we're there with uh, C-147s. We're the first ones there. Our Marines, our Navy, our Army, our engineers are the first ones there. And they still talk bad about us. I want you to know that. We're the first ones there. They don't talk bad when our parachutes are dropping good stuff. Okay. Uh, not only that. But among the countries of the earth, we're one of the countries that is still driven by justice, mercy, and humility. I want you to know that. Um, we've got our problems. We've got our bumps and bruises. We got our demonstrations, multiplied millions of us, of us, I say, of us, are unhappy with the new regime. Millions were unhappy when President Obama became president. Nobody's going to be happy all the time. Sometimes we lose and sometimes we win. But as far as I'm concerned, when the game's over, two lines line up on each side of the field, and the lines come together, and the players are shaking hands. Win or lose, we shake hands. The game's over. We move on. But uh, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's some people that never played a game. And they act like they never lost. And what do the teams do? Well, what the team does is if you lost, you go back and check out your game plan. So that you won't lose again. Right? Right? That's America. That's fair and square. Nobody kills anybody for winning. And nobody should disdain anybody for losing. There's something as a gracious winner. And there's something as a gracious loser. We have a new president. His name is President Donald Trump. There's a whole lot of prayers that went on during the inauguration. That's not to say that he's right in everything he does. There was a whole lot of prayers that went on when President Obama got elected. That's not to say that everything he did was right or everything he did was wrong. I say it's a time not for us to criticize. It's a time for us to look at ourselves in the mirror individually if you got something to say in the morning say it to yourself <laughs> I have a new president therefore I have a new president to pray for according to the word of God I prayed for the ex-president. Every Friday morning, Sister Grace 
You could hear her crying out loud over here by the piano. Bless our president. And bless Israel. And bless Israel. And now, every Friday morning, you will hear us Friday morning at 5 a.m. praying, bless our president and bless your people Israel. And bless the church of Jesus Christ. I don't know why God chooses who he chooses. But you cannot say that God did not choose this man. Because it says the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it to and fro as a river wherever he pleases. You should have clapped there. Unless the wherefores and thous turned you off. President Obama's heart was in the hands of God. He did many good things for us. Some things made us wonder. President Trump has already made us wonder. <laughs> but he will do many good things for us as well that will be pleasing to the Lord. Trust me, we're going to be all right as a country. Some of us didn't even vote. It's a, it's, it, it's a free country. Some of us voted one way. Some of us voted another way. The point is that we live in a country where we can vote and exercise our right to franchise. Men and women, black and white, everybody gets a chance to vote. And we thank God for that right. Amen. Now we have demonstrations all over the land. Some are driven by university students that forgot that the government pays for their grants and aid. Amen. Running around all over the street. Going to the demonstration. Are you going? Yeah, I'm going. But who funds your education? Think about that as you're carrying around placards denigrating the government, speeding on the hand that feeds you. Don't look at me like that. Maybe you're like that. No man's talking. I'm not saying don't demonstrate. Did I say that? We have a right to, and sometimes we need to. But let's think about things before we do them. That might temper our sanguine nature. On the other hand, we need to demonstrate. When things aren't fair and things don't go right, there's no reason why a black woman should sit at the back of the bus. There's no seats that say reserved on a public bus unless it's for special needs then at that time we must, we ought, and we should stand up for what's right. And may God give us the good sense to know when to do it. It's one of the most embarrassing things in my whole life as a youngster was that I not, just did not stand up for what was right because I couldn't have stand up after smoking dope and taking heroin and second all, I couldn't even stand up. <laughs> Much less stand up for what's right but I pray to God that it never happens again that I'll miss the bus of justice. That I miss the train of fairness. But that whenever we can, whenever we see somebody oppressed or dejected, and if it's our, in our hand to make a difference, that God will give us the wisdom to know when to stand up and to know when to shut up. You should have clapped right there. But for lack of wisdom, the people perish. 
And some of us don't know the difference. Especially a whole bunch of us right now in the new United States of America. There's no reason why we should be burning tires, making funeral pyres, malcontents breaking into stores, taking things that they can't afford. Get a job. Oh, I haven't found one for the last 10 years. Stand in front of a store and sweep. Keep sweeping for a week until the owner comes out, says, I just want to work. Where are those days? Where are the days when we were 10 years old packing eggs at Country Eggs for City Folks, getting a quarter of an hour underneath the blue light at the age of 10? Who knows what that blue light did to me? But when you got that quarter and you were 10 years old, you gave a nickel to each sister, sister for doing your chores. Kept the nickel for yourself. And a nickel could buy a lot. You could get a big candy bar with a nickel. Anybody remember Hollywood Bar? How about Big Time? Or how about Big Hunk? Ooh, Lord. I'm going to get you with this one. How about Walnettos? Nobody remember Walnettos? I know you're over 70. <laughs> you're not. You're not. Boy, I love Walnettos, man. You get a bubble up for a dime. You get a package of Fantan gum for five cents. Anybody remember blackjack? I may remember clove gum. Come on now. You guys are going, ugh. But I got to lighten up this peace and justice thing today. But we, we cannot go by without, uh, Pastor Joshua was telling me, Daddy, you got to say something about that. I said, you're right, boy. First of all, we got to thank God for the American process of politics. Um, as checkered as, as it is, I'm not so sure if I believe in an electoral college. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if the popular vote is the right way to go either. We got people that are thinking through that. But be that as it may, somebody won. And the Bible says this, pray for the authorities over you. Romans 13, 1 through 7. First Peter First Peter, pray for the authorities over you. Somebody stand up and give God a hand clap. Somebody stand up and give God a hand clap. That's his idea. Pray for the authorities over you, each and every one. Because they are, watch this. Watch this. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. They, did you know what the Bible says? They are a minister of God. Do you know the Bible says that? They are a minister of God. Just like me, just like Pastor Josh, Pastor Dozier, Pastor Don, they are a minister of God to execute justice with the sword. I'm going to say something real strange right now, and don't get me wrong. God is a God of order. God would rather have any government than no government. I hate to say this, but God would rather have a communist government than an anarchy. Are you listening to me? But are you saying that God's in charge of the communists? God's in charge of everybody. Amen. Nothing escapes God's control. Pastor, would you rather have a communist government than a democ democracy? No. Democracy up to now is the best government that we have on the face of the earth until the Messiah comes. And when Messiah comes, then God will execute his idea of the way this planet ought to be governed by a king named Jesus Christ. Amen. 